In November last year, NTV aired the story of a 16-year-old blind student who alleges that the former vice chancellor in charge of finance at Chambogo University, Dr. Lawrence Aaron, defiled her. According to the victim, 56-year-old Aaron, who also doubled as the head of the Faculty of Special Needs in the university, allegedly raped her after offering to drive her back to her parents' home in Namgongo. I got thirsty and I asked for water. He gave me a bottle and once I drank, I blacked out. After some time, when I gained the consciousness, I was in the back seat. Then he immediately gave me a pill, and when I asked what was it for, he said it would be effective before 72 hours. This was after a trip to Kenya with four other visually impaired students who had been attending an IT conference on visual impairment where Dr. Aaron was designated as their chaperone. Whereas he had threatened her not to tell anyone, the victim eventually informed her teachers when she reported back to school to write her O-level UNEB examinations. I was not at peace from time to time. I would experience the trauma again of being in shock again after realizing that I had been defiled. Yesterday, police spokesperson Fred Enanga revealed that investigations into this matter had been concluded and now they are on the hunt for Aaron who is on the run after skipping police bond. The case file was sanctioned on the 13th of December 2023 with the aggravated defilement of a girl aged 16 years with a disability uh, when he is HIV positive and uh, for the last over one month he has been in hiding. I'm glad that uh, this police has come out with a, a press release about the matter and is calling for the public uh, to give information on the whereabouts of the man and uh, that one has already made me pleased. Uh, I think justice is approaching. Apart from the police constituting criminal investigations into the matter, the University of Chambogo also constituted a select committee to also carry out internal investigations. And today the Vice Chancellor, Professor Elika Tunguka, has revealed to us how far they've moved with their own investigations. When we did that, we got some responses. I think one of them was the parent of the girl who came forward and met with the committee. The deadline that was given to the committee was the 19th of January, which was a Friday. But they found it difficult to finish their work and they asked for an extension of one week. With the report presented before the committee, Professor Katunguka says it will be up to the members to decide the former staffer's fate in line with the university's laws. One, we can interdict him, or if you want to call it suspend him, and then present him to the appointments board for disciplinary action. Because the appointments board that appoints and disappoints people in the university. Meanwhile, Dr. Aaron is additionally facing punishment after absconding from university duty. We gave him leave for 30 days, which leave expired. So right now we expected him to come back to work and he has been given load, like all members of staff. But unfortunately, he has not reported back. However, the Vice Chancellor has also revealed that there will be strengthening channels through which students and staff members can also report similar cases of sexual harassment. I think the university has a draft prevention of sexual harassment policy, which will soon come to management and we shall approve it and then start implementing it. The challenge we have is this is a habit which many of the victims don't want to come out and report. Joyce Nakato, NTV Tonight.